Jesus 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 There's just something about that name our master
Sometimes just the weight of his glory comes in the room. <laughs> Sometimes you're kind of afraid to say anything, move on, just kind of wait in his presence. Because he's touching people all over the room, right here in our time of worship. is the thirsty soul. Uh, he's renewing minds right now. Faith is arising. Shackles are falling off. Sing Rosta Bole Nista Penosta Ye. Manene Sekila. Ibo Shonda Lebos Tende. Just receive. Come on, press through the veil of the flesh. Press on through. Press. Press. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just 
worship you. Just worship you. Just worship you. Worship you.
in this wonderful, glorious atmosphere. I'd like for every head to be bowed just for a moment. I want to give you an opportunity. If you've never met Jesus, if you've never asked him to come into your heart and be your personal savior, we want to give you that opportunity this morning, right here in the middle of worship. Service is not over. We've got some other things we're going to do today. The Bible says that it's appointed unto man once to die, and after that there will be judgment. The Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. The Bible also says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, I believe we have some whosoever's in this room this morning. I'm a whosoever. Whosoever believeth in him, they would not perish, but they would have everlasting life. When we come to Christ and we ask him to forgive us of our sin, the Bible says he puts our sin in the sea of his forgiveness as far as the east is from the west, and he remembers it no more. It's like it never happened. You can lay your head on your pillow at night and have peace in your heart that if you breathe your last breath, you're instantly in the presence of the Lord forever. Your home is in heaven. You enter into your rest. But if you do not have that assurance and you don't know Christ as your Savior, then your home would be in the opposite place with all of Satan and those angels who follow him in the lake of fire. You know, the worst thing about hell is not the fire and the brimstone, the smoke. The worst thing about hell is the absence of the presence of God. To feel what you're feeling right now you're stirring in your heart that place will not have what we know right now in this room void of the presence of God and so this morning we'll all give an account for our life your parents won't answer for you your boss will not answer for you your pastor will not answer for you your priest will not answer for you you will give an account for your life so this morning, we get, want to give you an opportunity to receive Christ as your Lord and your Savior. So if you're here in this room and you've never prayed that prayer to ask the Lord to forgive you of your sin, but you'd say, Pastor Joe, would you pray for me this morning? I want to give my life to Christ. Today is my day of salvation. The Lord is touching my heart. I know He's real. And I want to acknowledge him as the Lord of my life. Would you just lift your hand across this room and say, that's me today. I want to give my life to Jesus today. Is there anyone like that right now? Anyone? I know this church is very, uh, they, they share the gospel. They, they reach out to others. Is there anyone here today you've never given your heart to Christ? A young person, man, woman, boy, or girl? Just lift your hand and say, Pastor, pray for me. Maybe you're here this morning and you say, Brother Joe, I'm just not sure. The Bible says you can know in whom you have believed. There be no doubt. We do a lot of ministry around the world. And here in America, I know in Texas, because of uh, our, our whole state has changed and because of uh, the, the, the folks from south of the border that have been flooding into our country, when you ask them if they're born again, they say, oh, I was baptized when I was a baby. And I tell them, no, you were blessed as a baby. Baptism comes when you realize that Jesus is Lord and you bury that old person and then you're raised to walk in the newness of life. Just because you're in this building today doesn't make you a Christian. Just because you live in America doesn't make you a believer. You have to know Christ. So maybe you're standing here today and you'd say, Brother Joe, I'm just not sure. But I want to make sure today. If that's you, would you lift your hand? And say, today is my day. I want to make sure that Jesus is the Lord of my life. Anyone? Just lift it way up high. Anyone? Anyone? Don't want to miss any person. You hear this morning and you say, Brother Joe, I, I know the Lord. There was a time when I gave my heart to Christ. 
There have been some things that have happened in my life. Maybe there was a bankruptcy. Maybe there was a, uh, there was a failed marriage. Maybe there was a tragedy in your life. And you blame God for that tragedy. And because of that, you walked away from your first love. Maybe there's been some uh, destructive habits that you've got, in, got into. One of the things that COVID brought to our country was there was this being home for all that time, isolation. There were so many men that got caught up, and women got caught up in pornography. They got caught up in pornography. Maybe there's some destructive habits that have crept into your life. No matter what they are, bitterness, anger, resentment, that you'd say this morning in this glorious presence of the Lord, I want to come back to my first love. I want to come back to my first love. If that's you, would you lift your hand and just say, Pastor, that's me. Be honest with the Lord. Just be honest with the Lord. That's me. Anyone, anywhere. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Come on, in the presence of the Lord is everything you need for, for breakthrough. Anyone else, just lift your hand. I want you to look at me across the room, all across the room. You didn't lift your hand for one of those invitations, but you say, Brother Joe, I want to be included in that prayer. I want to be included. Would you just lift your hand? Say, include me in that prayer today as we pray. Anyone, just lift your way up. I say, Pastor Joe, include me. I believe in God for things. I need breakthrough in some areas. I believe in God. Thank you. Anyone else? Anyone else? That's me. Anyone else? Thank you. Anyone else? I want to ask you to do me a favor. If you lifted your hand for one of those invitations, would you come and just stand right here at the front with me, please? Would you do that? Just come and stand right here. Just come and stand right here. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God baby for coming. Thank y'all for coming. Thank you. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to be an evangelist. I want you to turn to the person on either side and say, if you breathe your last breath, do you know heaven is your home? And if they cannot say yes, say, come on, I'll go with you. And I want you to come and meet me right here. Come on. Don't just look at me. Turn and ask them. Come on, is heaven your home? Is everything right with the Lord? If you need to come, just meet us right here. We're going to pray. Amen. Anyone else just before we pray? He has risen from the dead, and he is home. Wait just a few more moments. Pastor Rodney, from 94 to 99, our youngest, Allison, when we first came with Pastor, she was three, and she would sleep under the chairs, three meetings a day, and then I don't know, somewhere around five, six years of age, she started coming in the altar call, every altar call, <laughs> she did. she'd be the first one. He'd give the invitation, and here comes Allison. She'd beat everybody to the front, their hands raised. Finally, I went to Pastor, and I said, I'm sorry. I said, I know Allison's heard that invitation a thousand times. He looked, he said, don't worry about it. He said, one day she won't come because she'll know. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. She's 30 years of age now. She and her husband are creative arts pastors there in Houston where we are. She carries an incredible anointing. Now my grandsons, Judah and Zion, they're the ones who are there <laughs> with their hands lifted. True. And when we get back from camp meeting, they always say, Poppy, when are we going back? 
to Pastor Rodney's. We want the fire. We want the fire. They'll say, are we going to River Bears, River Bears today? I say, no, son, we're, we're here at the sea. But we'll go again. I just like the fire. I know, son. We all need the fire. So those of you that are standing here today, I want you to look at me. One of the things we do when people come in an altar call, and it doesn't matter here, any part of the world, everybody always bows their head like, woe is me. I want you to smile real big because this is the greatest decision you'll ever make. Come on, somebody. Greatest decision you'll ever make. Jesus loves you very, very much. He loves you guys very much. He loves you, sweetheart. That's the anointing on you. That's heaven on you right now. And you can live in this every moment of every day. Standing before me are three different kinds of people. Those that have come for the first time. Those that have come for assurance. Those that say, I know the Lord, but man, I got to come back to my first love. The things I got to lay down. And the prayer we pray is the same prayer. Same one. We ask Him to forgive us of all of our sin. And the Bible says He's faithful to do His part. Our part is then to live for Him. Come on, somebody. And the cool thing is, is that the power of the Holy Spirit that brought you to this place of decision is the same power that will keep you and give you victory. You don't have to go back tomorrow and go back to the same stuff. When you wake up in the morning, the fire of God is on you to equip you to be bold and say no. I ain't going there another time. Then whenever those thoughts begin to come, to go back to those old paths, you go, Jesus, not today. When you shout like that, some people have to do it every day because it takes a while for those strongholds to be broken, those patterns to be broken. So I want you just to lift your hands. Those of you in the congregation, lift your hands because there may be others that didn't have the courage to come this morning, but the anointing of the Lord is speaking to you right now. Those that are watching online, in your home right now, you can stand at your kitchen table or there in the living room and lift your hands and pray this prayer. The same anointing that's in this room will come into your house. There's no distance in the spirit. Daddy, you take your place. Single mom, you have strength to lead your babies. The fire of God will come and meet you where you are. So let's pray together. Say, dear Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus, I believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, born of the Virgin Mary, lived a perfect life. Lord, you went to the cross. You gave your life on that cross for me. Lord, you were raised from the dead, and you sit at the Father's right hand. And Lord, you call my name right now before your Father. Lord, I ask you to forgive me of all my sin, all the things that I have done that are against you. Lord, I believe that as I ask you today that you'll wash me clean. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your power brings me to this place freedom today I give you my life to serve you all the days of my life thank you that you hear my prayer right now now right where you stand just with your own mouth say Lord I thank you I'm forgiven my past will not hold me I'm a new man. I'm a new creation in Jesus right now. Thank you, Lord. 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 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Are you guys, are you guys friends? Huh? Boyfriend and girlfriend, so that means you're friends. Be friends before you get married. Because you came, she followed. You know how powerful that is? You know how right that is in God's sight? In America, many times it's the wife. She goes and the guys stay home, go fishing or whatever. Watch stuff on TV they shouldn't watch. God's calling you to a place to lead. She'll follow wherever you go. That's not a burden. That's a privilege an honor that God would entrust a help meet just lift your hands every stronghold broken off your life today the anointing of God is all over you he arrests you today you'll never be the same ever ever never ever the same Father we thank you for your anointing upon this young lady the fresh fire of God be appointed from the top of your head to the soles of your feet every stronghold broken right now we don't receive with our head we receive with our heart show us take it show us right now never the same never the same every stronghold my brother is broken today has to go right now in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus, every stronghold broken. Roast the key. Fight! Just lift your hands, sweet lady. Father, we thank you for what you're doing in this young woman. Fresh oil. Lord, use her to touch her generation. Lord, she knows you. These babies know the Lord. I know that. What's your name? Luca, close your eyes, Luca. Now, Lord, use Luca to touch his generation. Use him, Father. Thank you, Lord, for your love. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. y'all just step right there in the aisle your wife just come here right here right here right here just come 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 ah. Ah. Jesus Jesus fresh fire fresh fire fresh fire fresh fire fresh fire fresh oil fresh oil just receive Lift your hands, close your eyes, and listen. Thank you, Father.
toil. No more, no more fight. Joy. Yeah, there you go. Free. Let it go. Free. Hey. Yeah, you you fighting too hard. Ain't it's your fight. It's not your fight. Free. 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 Joy. Joy. Oh. Free. Free. Yeah. yeah. No, look, 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 look. Yeah. Yeah. Joy. what it is about the Hispanic culture, but everybody wants to cry. Well, that's <laughs> it. <laughs> oh, there's a, wait, there's a joy in the Holy Ghost. It's like something we, catechism or something, you know, yeah, woe is me. No, 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 no. Free! Joy of the Lord is your strength and your strong ho, 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 ho. Hold. Joy, joy, joy. <laughs> uh, I'm going to throw this microphone out the window in a minute. Gets about half of what I say. That's for somebody out there, too. You're working way too hard. Joy, joy, joy. Joy, joy, joy. I'm trying to. Grabbed it about every place I'm grabbing. Thank you, Father. Cleansed by His blood. Hallelujah. Cleansed, Cleansed by His blood. <laughs> Lost in His love. Come on, He loves you. Oh, you'll never be the same. Old things passed away. Never be the same. Again, isn't that so much better? Isn't that so much better? Yeah. <laughs> isn't that so much easier? Isn't that so much easier? Are you gonna burst a blood vessel? Things passed away, never be the same again. Forgiven, forgiven, laying here today, <laughs> you are forgiven. By his blood. Almost in his love. Oh, you'll never be the same. Old things passed away. Lift your hands. Father, we thank you for your anointing on this man. Fresh oil. From the top of his head to the soles of his feet. Every need supply. In Jesus' name. Every need supply. Need supply. Every need supply. Oh, hallelujah. Lift your hands across the congregation. 
Just say, Lord, today I receive everything you have for me. Lord, I'll take what no one else wants. I'll take their portion if they don't want it. But I'm not leaving anything behind. In Jesus' name. Well, come on, let's give the Lord praise this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Well, you may be seated just for a few minutes. Those on the floor, don't be in a hurry. It's God's operating table. You wouldn't dare get off the operating table. The surgeon's working on you. It's all right. I know you're not through, but I'm going to get up anyway. No, you wouldn't do that. Thank you, Father. The Lord is so good. Amen. Amen. It's been such an honor to be here this weekend. Pastor Alex and Lauren, all the team, you guys are amazing. Looks like all the babies are headed to Kids Church, so see you all in a little while. Now, don't all you guys act like adults. <laughs> act like kids, all right? Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We Thank woke you. up. We woke up this way. Yeah, we did. We woke up this way this morning. Last night, Pastor Alex, if you were not here, go back and if you can watch, y'all keep everything on a podcast and all that good stuff. You need to go back and watch that message that he shared. Powerful message. Powerful. Life changing. And uh, my wife and I, we're people of great faith. But the Lord challenged us in some areas of our own ministry and life through that message. And there's some things unfinished. We, uh, in October, we began our 50th year of full-time ministry. You know? And so we've been serving the Lord together 50 years. We haven't been married that long, which means she came with our family three years before we got married. So to irritate people, I say we lived with each other three years before we got married. <laughs> but but, but the, it was a family. But the reality it is, if you know my mom and dad... Uh, there was a great gulf <laughs> fixed there between was. us. True. But uh, the Lord has been so gracious and good to us, and we are so happy. I'm going to ask my wife to come, and we're going to uh, prepare for the morning tithes and offerings. So a few guys will just uh, allow my wife to come and greet you and minister to you guys. She's going to share some things. You may get two messages today. I don't know. And uh, give it just a minute. Can, it will. Can we? Can come I up. go down or no? Yep. Is that all right with you? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you Lord. Wow. No, that's good. That's Perfect. fine. That's fine. Thank you, Lord. My Hopefully goodness gracious. Up. Wow. What a way to have church, y'all. What a way to have you're church. Fine. I have absolutely. No, you're fine. I, I I'm just so blessed. You know. We were telling pastors um, on the first day, I said, you know, it's a joy and privilege for Pastor Joe and I uh, to visit a lot of the river churches. We're in quite a few of the river churches throughout the year. And um, there's some, they're all so different in the fact that they have the personality of their pastors, but there's some core values in all of the river churches that are just, it's them. You know, you're at a river church. And, uh, so you never know until you come and visit. But I'll tell you what, as Pastor Joe said, we, we got so blessed uh, this weekend just being here, watching what the Lord is doing. And uh, we, know, we know you're you know, new. We know you're kind of a, a up and coming. But I'm going to tell you, you have no idea what the Lord has in store for this place. Eye has not seen, neither has it been revealed to the heart of man the things God has in store for the River Church Orlando. I'm just here to tell you right now. I'm here to tell you that it's beyond what you could dare ask, think, or imagine what God has in store. So, man, it's just such a privilege. It's such a privilege to be uh, 
to be with you and to be a part of these days. I, I, I say early days. It's not early for you, but it's early for us. And uh, But I'm glad we got here when we did. So uh, it's just a joy just to see what God is doing and to be a part of, uh, of the work of God of God in, in this house and the work that God will do through this house is mind boggling. It's, it, 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 we can see it. You know, we can see it. We've been around a long time and you can see uh, the potential that God has. So you guys just stepping in, coming up under your leaders, just do everything they say to do. Can I just say that it's, that's the easiest way, whatever they tell you to do, do it. Do that. God has anointed them for this place and for this time and for this season. And if you'll trust them and link your arms in faith with them, and uh, you'll see great things. And the overflow that's on them will be in your house, be in your home, will be in your life, will be in your ministry, will be in your business. So it's, it, it flows from the top down. So just come up under that. And, uh, and rest in that place. Uh, we were telling, we got to work with, a, I say work, we got to visit with the praise team, with the worship team on Saturday morning. What a joy that was. We had such a great time in the presence of the Lord. But uh, as we were kind of mentioning those same things to the team, is just Pastor Joe and I, we served other men and women of God for 25 years until the Lord launched us uh, in 1999. And uh, we learned so much. There were three mentors in our life that uh, really marked us. Uh, obviously, one of them was Joe's parents. His mom and dad were great leaders. They were great parents. They were great role models for us. Uh, and uh, we thank God, you know, for mom and dad crews. They, they set the bench way high. They set the mark way high. And then in the early, uh, late 80s, early 90s, we went to a church in Texas in Rockwall, Texas, right outside of Dallas, and we were the worship leaders there under Mike and Vicki Hankins. And they really put, I would say Joe's mom and dad really showed us how to love people. Um, his parents were great lovers of people. Uh, all walks of life, all of humanity, uh, his parents just loved deeply and unconditionally. And I believe we learned that, you know, from your mom and dad. Then we went to Rockwall in the late 80s, early 90s, and served under Mike and Vicki Hankins. And what they put in us was the love for the church and how to do church, if you will. There were certain things in church that you just want to do. You want to equip people. You want to lead people. You want to build people in the local house. And so Pastor Mike, man, he was so much of our early years of developing us. We had grown up on the road. We were road kids. Uh, we had a lot of success in the Christian music industry in the 70s and 80s. And so we didn't know much about the church, but we went to Rockwall there. And we were there for many years. And the Lord showed us and taught us and gave us the love for the local church. And then in 1994, 95, we had an encounter that wrecked our, wrecked our lives forever with Drs. Rodney and Donica Howard Brown. And we went to work for them in uh, 95 and served them. And really, obviously, if you know that ministry, the thing that, that marked us was the anointing, was how to flow in the anointing, how to, to reap and receive from that anointing and then let it flow through us into a dying world. And so, uh, you know, those were the three men that absolutely marked us. But it's 25 years that we served and held the hands of others. And then the Lord, you know, said it's time. And so we've been endeavoring to do that since 1999. And we went to Austin, Texas in 2001, established a church uh, the, in 2001, the week after the towers fell. <laughs> That was good timing. Uh, yeah, it was the week after, and that was our first start there in uh, Austin, and we were there 13 years. We had, over the course of the years there, we had a church, a great church. We, had, we established the worship school the next year, and the next year we established an academy, a grade uh, uh, K-3, and then we grew every year until our daughter graduated from high school. And so uh, it was an amazing time in our lives. And at the end of that 13 years, uh, we began to go through some transition. And the Lord uh, gave us a word. And the Lord said, I'm going to send you around the world one more time. Like a lightning bolt that rings around the earth. Because there's a generation that's never heard the sound. And so we endeavored 
to get ourselves ready to go to run and do that. And literally, the Lord has carried us around the globe uh, multiple times now through the years, these last few years. And um, there is a generation that's hungry for the sound of heaven. And you know, what God has given us, we were talking to pastors about this the other night, what God has given us, uh, it, it crosses the borders of time and current and music. It crosses the borders. It's a sound. And uh, whatever God has given this house, we believe out of this house is going to come the sound of heaven. And it's going to be multicultural. It's going to cross nations. It's going to cross generations. It's going to be a multicultural uh, uh, sound, but heaven's going to be in it. And you know when you walk through those doors, heaven's going to be in the house. And that's what we believe, and that's what we love to sow into is, uh, you know, houses like this. So that's what we're here for. And I'm, I'm here to tell you with all humbleness in my heart, we didn't come for a check. We came to make a deposit came to make a deposit in here. And uh, we'll come back every so often and just see how the team's doing, how the team's growing, because that's, that's so important to us is that we get these teams up and running and they get the sound of heaven in their voices and, uh, and they won't lack. So that's, that's what we've endeavored to do all these years, and it's just been a joy and it's been a privilege. Well, uh, so I'm just going to take just a minute, and um, I know you, I, I stand in this pulpit in a bit of fear and trepidation because I know you get some of the best teaching on giving ever. But I'm going to remind you of some things that you probably already know. And then we're just going to uh, go ahead and receive the offering for the house. And at the end of the meeting, whenever that might be, I don't know, but whenever that might be, we'll, uh, we'll tell you about the ministry and you can partner with us in that. I'm going to tell you, Joe and I, we are all about partnership. We are not lone rangers in the body. We need one another. We need people, people need what we have, and together we partner because we can do. The exponential uh, abundance from partnership is way beyond what people can do alone. And so we feel like when we come, we partner, we partner with you, and, uh, and the Lord. We have, we have never lacked. Can I say this to you, church? Joe said 50 years. I'm going to tell you the body of Christ has blessed us. We cannot complain. Ha. Huh. I think this morning as we were worshiping in the room before we came to church, that was the thing that just overwhelmed us was the goodness and the faithfulness of God. God has blessed us immensely. And so we're just honored. We're honored. And, and to be able to partner with this house and to see what the Lord has in store, it's, it just it gets in us. And it just, it's exciting to see your future and what God has for you. So I'm just going to share a few things and... Um, I kind of want to go two ways, but I'm going to go, I want you to go to Judges chapter 6 for a moment. I want to talk to you just quickly this morning about the power of the offering. And um, obviously, we're going to make this in reference to the tithe. But an offering is an offering. A tithe and offering, I mean, obviously you're giving of your, sub, of your substance. And so um, I want to show you something I think a lot of people miss a lot of times is the power of the offering. And I, 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 and I know you're not. I know you're not. But, you know, we go to a lot of different churches and you see your fair share of bucket plunkers. You know what I mean? They just kind of throw something in the bucket, and there's nothing. There's no faith there. It's just what they've always done. They throw something in the bucket. So they don't realize the power of the offering. They don't realize what they're giving, their tithe, their sowing of seed, their giving of offerings. They don't realize that there's an absolute power connected to it. So I want you to see this, and, of course, there's a lot of scriptures that will support this, but I'm going to take one. I'm going to take the one out of Judges and show you. I'm going to read this to you out of the Amplified. This is Judges chapter 6. It says, But the Israelites did evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord gave them into the hands of Midian for seven years. Now, if you guys are in the Read Your Bible Through uh, uh, you know, challenges on your Bible app, uh, you just realize that at this point in the lives of the children of Israel, um, they're all over the map. 
there, <laughs> there are days that they go with God, and there are days they just absolutely yield to their flesh. And at this point in time, there's actually no leadership in the land. There are certain judges that are raised up throughout. Um, so this is kind of where they are. They're in, a, they're in a world of hurt. Somebody say, they're in a world of hurt. The Israelites did evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord gave them into the hand of Midian for seven years. And the hand of Midian prevailed against Israel. Because of Midian, the Israelites made themselves the dens which are in the mountains and the caves and strongholds. For whenever Israel had sown their seed, the Midianites and the Amalekites and the people of the east came up against them. And they would encamp against them and destroy the crops as far as Gaza and leave no nourishment for Israel and no ox or sheep or donkey. <clears throat> for they came up with their cattle and their tents, and they came like locusts for multitude. So I want you to get the picture, uh, an all-out war, if you will, on the children of Israel, an attack, the Midianites. The Bible said they came like locusts for multitude. Both they and their camels could not be counted, and they wasted the land. They wasted the land. So we're talking about dire straits here. We're talking about a season in the life of the children of God. Seen great things, done amazing, have had great victories in their life, and they're sitting in this place at this time ravaged, totally ravaged, totally ravaged. And verse 6 there, and Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites. Say greatly impoverished. Because of the Midianites. And the Israelites cried to the Lord. Interesting. The Israelites cried to the Lord. I don't know what it is and why at times there are times in our life, seasons in our life, when although we've seen the uh, great things that God has done and the amazing victories that have been won, and there comes a place in our life where, you know, it's, it's, it's almost like, Help! And this is where children of Israel were. They cried to the Lord because of Midian. And the Lord sent a prophet. Somebody say, thank God for the prophet. The Lord sent a prophet to the Israelites. He had the word of the Lord in his mouth, who said to them, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, I brought you up from Egypt and brought you forth out of the house of bondage. He begins to remind them. He, he begins to bring to memory what he's done for them in the past. It's a reminder, and I delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of all who oppressed you and drove them out from before you and gave you their land. This is God speaking through the prophet to the children of Israel sitting in a place of complete ravage and now reminding them of their past. Gave you their land, and I said to you, I am the Lord your God. Fear not the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell, but you've not obeyed my voice. The big O word. It's where we get into a lot of problems. Obedience. That's why I said, you know, you'd be safe. If you come here, pull up under your pastors and do what they ask you to do. They hear from God. They're going to speak the word of the Lord. Obedience is key to your success. Just be obedient. Just be obedient. But you have not obeyed my voice. The next verse says, Now the angel of the Lord came and sat under the oak at Ophrah, which belonged to Joash the Abrazite, and his son Gideon was beating wheat in the wine press to hide it from the Midianites. It's a bad place when you have to hide in the wine press. Anybody know what a wine press looked like? It was a big uh, cement, circular um, cement, big tub, and they actually would put the grapes in there, and they would go in and stomp the grapes. It had a little thing on the end of it, and the juice would come out, and all the pulp and everything would stay in there. They were in such a place of impoverishment, of lack, of total a, a ravage, if you will, there was no grapes in the land, and actually Gideon was beating wheat in the wine press to hide from the Midianites. Somebody say, that's a bad, that's bad. 
That's a bad place to be. But guess who shows up? The angel of the Lord. The Lord himself shows up. He shows up. Isn't that powerful? That just, I was like, yep. Yeah, it doesn't matter where you are. The Lord will find you. If he's called you and appointed you, and now he's going to speak to Gideon about his call. It's so powerful. He was beating wheat in the wine press to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, watch this, the Lord is with you, you mighty man of fearless courage. Listen, did Gideon look like he was a mighty man of fearless courage at this point? No, no, no. He's hiding in the wine press. <laughs> I love it when the Lord speaks prophetically over us. I love it when people see not where we are, but where we can be. I love it when our pastors can see not where we are today, but what we can be in the future. And the angel of the Lord, the, the, the Lord himself, if you want that interpretation, the Lord himself meets Gideon at this place of probably like with Gideon, it's like the last straw. And he calls him, he calls him not what he was at that moment, but what he was going to be. Powerful. He calls him and he says, you mighty man of fearless courage. And Gideon said to him, oh, sir, if the Lord is with us, why has all this befallen us? And where are all these wondrous works of which our fathers told us, saying, did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But how, now the Lord has forsaken us and given us into the land, into the hand of Midian. And the Lord turned to him and said, and the Lord absolutely ignores his whining. I'm going to tell you what, if you need a word from God, please don't whine. I, I tell you, a lot of the people, a lot of the body of Christ, they're whiners. They develop the muscle of whine. And man, they can whine with the best of them to the Lord. And I'm telling you what, the Lord just bypasses it all. He bypasses it all here. <clears throat> and he says, he says to him, the Lord turned to him and said, go in your might. And you shall save Israel from the hand of Midian. Have I not sent you? That's a fair question. That's a fair question. Listen, if you've ever wondered what and how God's going to do it, then you're just going to have to shut off your head, shut off your mind, and remind yourself, have, has the Lord not sent me? Has the Lord not called me? And so here he says, uh, the, the word of the Lord, have I not sent you? And Gideon says to him again, O Lord, how can I deliver Israel? Behold my clan. Again, excuses. Behold, my clan is the poorest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. Again, the Lord ignores his whine and says to him, Surely I will be with you, and you shall smite the Midianites as one man. Somebody said, Get rid of the whine. It don't move the heart of God. He's still got something for you to do. Gideon said to him, now this is where it gets good. If now I have found favor in your sight, then show me a sign that it is you who talks with me. <laughs> Gideon asked for a sign. And in the next phrase comes into covenant. I love, I love the vision of this house. He asked for a son from the Lord. And then in the next verse, look, look at that next verse. Do not leave here, I pray you, until I return to you and bring my offering, set it before you. And the angel of the Lord said, I will wait until you return. Then Gideon went in and prepared a kid and unleavened cakes and an ephah of flour, the meat he put in a basket and the broth in a pot and brought them to him under the oak and presented them. Now, I want to ask you something. In the midst of drought and famine, where did he get the kids? Where, where, where did he find this offering? Many people say, I don't have. You know, I'd give. I'd give if I had. I'm telling you, there, it is in your hand in the form of seed. You might not think it's worthy. You might not think it's offering worthy. But there's something that God's put in your hand that you can offer to the Lord. Listen, they were in famine. But Gideon comes into covenant. And he goes and gets an offering. 
He prepares the kid, the unleavened cakes, the meat. He put in a basket, the broth in the pot, and brought them to him under the oak and presented them. And the angel of God said to him, Take the meat and unleavened cakes and lay them on this rock and pour the broth over them. And he did so. And the angel of the Lord reached out the tip of that staff that was in his hand and touched the meat and the unleavened cakes and there flared up fire from the rock and consumed the meat and the unleavened cakes. And the angel of the Lord vanished from his sight. And when Gideon had perceived that he was the angel of the Lord, Gideon said, Alas, O Lord God, for now I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face. And the Lord said to him, Peace be to you. Do not fear. You shall not die. And Gideon built an altar there to the Lord and called it the Lord is peace. In this day it still stands in Oprah. And if you go on and read, obviously you know Gideon did great exploits. And the Bible says at the end of this passage with Gideon in his reign, the land rested for 40 years. The land rested for 40 years. So I want you to see about five things, and I'll make these very short. Five things I want you to see out of this passage, the power of the offering. An offering can be the place of meeting. A reminder of the covenant we have with God. Do you remember in uh, Genesis and then also in Hebrews, Melchizedek? Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the most high God, met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him. And to him, Abraham apportioned a tenth part of everything. Somebody say the tenth part of everything. Second Chronicles told them when Pastor Rodney preaches on heaps, uh, and, they, and they brought what? The tithe of everything. Everything. So I'm going to encourage those of you this morning, as you bring the tithes and offerings, don't cheat God. Don't cheat God. Bring in the tithe of everything. It was a place of meeting. He is first, by translation of his name, king of righteousness. He is also the king of Salem. That is the king of peace. He is without father and mother, talking about Melchizedek, having never be beginning of days nor end of life, but resembling the son of God. He continues as a priest forever. The offering is a place of meeting. And you know why m many people don't have encounters with God? It's because they're not givers. You show me a giver, I'll show you people who meet with God. You show me people who meet with God, I'll show you a giver. And worship is all connected in that. Your worship, your giving, uh, it's all intertwined. If you're a worshiper, you should be a giver. If you're a giver, you should be a worshiper. There's, there, it's all intertwined. It is a place of meeting. And many times people don't understand that by their giving, by their bringing their tithes, and, and listen, many people are in problems today with all of the current situation, the current economy, and all that kind of people living from paycheck to paycheck, and they don't realize the power in their hand is in their offering. And so they just tip God. You just throw something in the bucket. We see here this very powerful passage. It was a place of meeting. The angel of the Lord came. Gideon saw him. He didn't know all about him, but he said, if it's you, let me go get an offering. That was a sign of the covenant. And when he brought that offering, and we, we still don't know where that offering came from. I mean, they're living in the impoverished state. Do you understand? And many times people say, well, I really, you know, if I had it, I'd bring the tithe. No, you're not going to have it if you don't bring the tithe. That's what you don't understand. And so the power of the offering is it's a place of meeting. Number two, it's a place of sacrifice. The offering is a place of sacrifice. You remember, or surrender, you could say. You remember in Genesis 22, the story of Abraham presenting his son Isaac. Uh, Genesis 22, 11 through 13, the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven. You remember, he took the boy and he said, my son and I, we're going to go up and what? Worship. We're going to go and worship. And what? We'll return again. So, I mean, you know, Abraham was a man who was quite familiar with surrender and sacrifice and giving. And he said, and of course, you know the story, uh, he was fixing to lay the knife to this, his son Isaac. And the angel of the Lord called to him, angel of the Lord, okay, at the place of sacrifice, at the place of surrender. When you bring your offering, when you bring your tithe, it's a place of saying, God, Everything I have is yours. Everything 
I have. It's a place of sacrifice. It's a place of surrender. Lord, I don't know, but Lord, you know. And as I'm faithful to bring my tithe into the storehouse, Lord, you're going to not only meet me as I surrender my life, Lord, you're going to make up the difference and go beyond what your own natural ability is able to to do. It's a place of meeting. It's a place of surrender and sacrifice. Uh, Number three, it's a place of power. People don't understand the power of the offering. It's a place of power. I want more anointing. I want more anointing. But you know what? It's hard for people to let go of that cash. It's hard for them to let go of that tithe check. And, and in the, the funny thing that we found in our church, we'd have people come in. They didn't have the understanding. They don't have the teaching that you've been taught. And so they don't understand the power of the offering. And so they'd come into the church there in Austin. And, I mean, they would be on their last leg. And they'd come in. They'd sit under the teaching. They'd sit under the worship. They, we taught on giving. And we saw many people prosper through the years, the 13 years that we were there. I mean, came in with nothing, but they would go out and they would be prosperous. But here's what happens is once people get to prospering, they begin to forget God. They begin to forget God. And we'd see them. We'd see them. I mean, they'd be there. They'd be serving in the house. They'd be the first ones there, the last ones to leave. I mean, just pressing in, needing a miracle, needing a miracle. And then God showed up in their life. And all of a sudden, you begin to see them less and less. They used to sit on the front row, (coughs) but over time, it'd be the back row, and before you knew, it was out the door, and you never saw them again. Well, you know, we, we have this, and we have that, thank you. And we have this, and we have, a, we have a summer home now, and we have a lake home, and we have a boat, and we have this, and we need to spend time with our, we work so hard, and oops, sorry, sorry about that, Pastor. We work so hard. We work so hard, and we need to spend time with our family. We need this, and, and you don't see them. And you know what? The absolute power of God goes out the door, and they begin to get in problems. I'm thinking of a couple. I'm not going to mention their name. They go through a tragic divorce. They're kids who were faithful in the house of God. Faithful in the house of God in the early days. On drugs, alcohol, total mess. I'm going to tell you, the power, the power was gone out of their life because they didn't make room for him anymore. They made room for all of the riches, all of the things that they lacked for so long. And, and, and it consumed them. And their love... For mammon, as Pastor talked about last night, they like overwhelmed them. And, I, and we saw their family just absolutely destroyed because of it. I'm telling you that the, there is power in your giving. You'll remember the scripture from 1 Kings 18 with Elijah the prophet and the showdown with the prophets of Baal. Do you remember that? Um, verse, uh, can't, First Kings 18, 36, 37, 38 says, At the time of the offering, somebody say, At the time of the offering, Elijah the prophet came near and said, O Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that you are God in Israel and that I am your servant and that I have done all these things at your word. Uh, Verse 37, answer me, O Lord, answer me that this people may know that you, O Lord, our God, have, that you have turned their hearts back and then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt offering and the wood and the stone and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their face and said, the Lord, he is God. I'm going to tell you, there's power in your giving. You need power. You need power, the power of God. You need wisdom. You need direction. You need understanding. Maybe there's decisions that are out there. Uh, Maybe it's in your relationships. Maybe it's in your children. I don't know what it is, but you need the power of God to come. And I'm going to say to you, when you give, you see your offering as that place of meeting, as that place of sacrifice, but you see your offering as that place of power. When the power of God will show up on your behalf and do things you cannot do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It was a place of meeting. It was a place of sacrifice. It was a place of power. Uh, Verse 4, it's a place of perception where your eyes are open. 
We see this with Gideon. It says, just as the scales fell off of Gideon and he recognized the angel of the Lord, so often we determine no matter what to bring our gifts and worship him. When you can see your offering as worship, many people don't see their offering as worship. And, and, and as he went and found that offering and presented it, the fire came. The Bible says the scales were off of his eyes, and then he began to see. He began to see. Some of you, you need to see some things. You need to see, thus saith the Lord. You need to hear, thus there's some things you need God to do for you. Can I just say to you, remember the power of your offering today. And don't be a bucket plunker, but always connect your faith and your promises. Lord, this is my place of meeting. When you give your offering, Lord, this is my place of meeting. I want to meet with you. I want to have fellowship. Koinonia, the Bible calls it. Uh, I, this is my place of surrender. Lord, I'm nothing, you're everything. As you see, this offering represents my love and my covenant with you. And if you need fire in your life, you need the power of God to come in and totally do things in your life, you got to remember that your offering is that place. It's that place where the fire will come and burn away all of the dross. And I'm telling you, it is so powerful. And then it's the place of perception. So some of you, you may have some areas of your life you don't understand. You don't know what's happening. You don't know what, which way to go. I'm telling you, when you recognize the power of your offering and you give it with that understanding of, Lord, as I bring my offering to you today, let the scales come on. I, I, I've seen the Lord do some things for us uh, as we, you know, we didn't just always know how to give. When we came around, past, in fact, when Pastor Rodney was in our church in uh, Rockwall, uh, it was over, I'm it was a, when, where God really touched. I, I'm going to be honest. I was offended. I'm just going ahead and tell you. Pastor came. I'm like, what's he doing? What's he taking so long for? Why is he taking so long? We all know this. And one Friday morning, uh, he had been there about three weeks. And uh, I go and get prayer in the, you know, I, we come up for prayer. And the, I'm telling you, the, fire, the Lord fire hoses me with my stinking attitude about the whole giving message. And at that moment, Joe and I, we just got up and said, okay, we're going to have to do this different. And we went to the, uh, we, we left the meeting that morning. This was on a Friday. We probably got paid, and probably, I'm going to be honest with you, because the church was in, where we were serving at the time, was in such massive disarray. Uh, they couldn't hardly do anything for us financially. We had just said, okay, we'll partner with you. And uh, that was Friday, and it was a uh, payday. And probably there wasn't much left of it already. But we determined in our hearts we'd gotten some revelation on giving. And we got up off the floor on that Friday morning, and we went to the local bank. And we opened. Pastor Rodney had taught that morning on the seed account. And we went to the bank. We opened an account. It was then called the seed account. We call it our giving account now. But it, we called it the seed. And we, so we set it up. We named it the seed account. Yeah, we were opening. We were sitting in the new uh, account lady, and she said, okay, what do you want to call this? And we said, we want to call it the seed account. And she did this. She had on those uh, bifocals. She looked over her glass. She said, you farmers? <laughs> well, we said, of sorts, kind of. And I think we took $100 and put in that seed account. If I could tell you the miraculous things God's done, that it's carried us around the world. In fact, we, we, we got here this week by the seed account, right? Because God has blessed us and never run dry. We just, we give, and then it comes back in. We give, and then it comes back in. We give, and then it comes back in. But we got the revelation, and the scales fell off of our eyes as we began to understand it wasn't the church's issue. It wasn't anybody, one our parents, because they didn't teach us. It was an issue of our heart. And once we got understanding revelation about giving and the power of our offerings, everything changed. Everything changed. Everything changed. Our whole life, our whole ministry changed. So you see here, uh, it's the place where Gideon's eyes were open. And uh, you have, you know what? If you're facing some issues today, when you give that tithe, when you bring your tithe into the storehouse, say, Lord, I need wisdom. I believe you're the place I, I'm here. I'm here to meet with you in this offering. I'm here. It's a sa sacrifice to me. It's a sacrifice. It's the, it, it, I need your power, and I need my eyes to be open. Show me. This is the way I walk in it. And the last thing, the offering is, can be the place of peace. In Judges 6, 
peace be to you. Do not fear. The Lord tells him, you'll not die. And then Gideon built the altar, and the Lord called it the place of peace. Listen, can I tell you, it's, there's a great peace on us when we obey the Lord with our giving. You just know. You know that you know. Listen, we've written some crazy checks before and uh, where our hands were shaken, and it was big for us. And, uh, but there was peace. We put that in the offering bucket as the offering came by, and it was a, we just looked one another and go, you'll be all right. God, he's our provider. He's going to do it. So I just remind you this morning, it's a place of meeting. Don't ever forget that. Don't be a bucket plunker. Realize that when you get that, give that offering, he's there to meet with you. He's going to ask you, what do you need? And you're going to be able to say, Lord, Lord, I lay myself down. It's a place of surrender. It's a place of the fire of God. The fire will come and burn out. And it's a place of perception. The Lord will open your eyes to what he's called you to do. And there will be great peace on your life. Amen. That's all I got for you. Awesome. Hallelujah. We're going to ask the ushers to prepare for the morning tithes and offerings. And uh, they'll put up all the different ways for you guys to give. And just be sure and honor the Lord this morning with your giving, your tithes and your offerings. We'll receive an offering for the ministry at the, at the end of the service here in just a little bit. And uh, we're not going to keep you too much longer because I want you to come back tonight at 7, 6, what is it, 7 o'clock. And tonight we're going to lay hands on all Everyone here, we're going to pray for families tonight. So if your family is not here, you have family members that need to be in the house of the Lord tonight, we want to pray for them. But there's an anointing on our family for families. Just give you a quick testimony. We were ministering in a church. Been there for a week of revival. On Thursday night, I said, uh, I ministered on wayward children. And... Uh, as I began to minister and I asked family members that had kids that were not serving the Lord to come in the altar call and the Lord prompted in my spirit I said you have kids you don't even know where they are but I said when you wake up in the morning those kids are going to be sitting in your kitchen now that's less than 24 hours and when I then I said it I said oh my goodness I put God on a timetable but out of my spirit, I saw it by the Holy Ghost. And sure enough, next night we get there on Friday night for the meeting and a Hispanic man walked up to me and he said, Pastor Joe, you're not going to believe what happened. I said, what happened? He said, I have a stepson that's been struggling on drugs nearly three years. He said, a lady came to me the other day. I saw your son underneath a bridge. He was underneath a bridge eating around a fire. He said, and the dad said, well, which bridge? I'll go get him. And when he went by that bridge, he wasn't there at that one. But he said, Pastor Joe, this morning when I woke up, sitting in my kitchen was my son. And he said he was in his right mind. And he said, and the, and the dad said, boy, what are you doing here? He said, Pastor Joe told me, he said, there's going to be somebody You've been looking, your son's been gone, your, your child's been gone, but in the morning they're going to be sitting in your, in your kitchen. He said, Pastor Joe, he said, I walked in the kitchen to get my coffee and my son's sitting in my kitchen. I said, well, what did you do? He said, he's my stepson, never call me dad. He said, I opened my arms like this. And he said, my son opened his arms and said, Dad, I've come home. He said, boy, he said, I love you with all my heart. And I said, what are you doing and he said, my son said, Dad, I have no idea. I woke up morning under a bridge. And he said, the Lord said, get home. And he said, so I'm sitting here. Oh, I don't even know why. And said, I know. He said, last night we prayed for you. And a preacher stood up in the middle of the service and said, there's going to be somebody and their boy or their child is away. But they're going to wake up in the morning and be sitting in their kitchen. And he, son, that's, he said, son, that's you. He said, you're the one that preacher said would be sitting in the kitchen. He said, the Lord's got a plan for your life. And he said, I led my son to the Lord. I don't know what God wants to do, but I know this. There's an anointing on our family for families. 
So I wouldn't miss tonight. It's going to be powerful. It's going to be powerful. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You can turn this one up in my ears. Is everyone ready to give? You saw the different ways. If you're ready, either hold up your phone or your offering before the Lord. There's an anointing on the offering today as well. Let's just pray. Father, we thank you for every gift and every giver. Father, we thank you that every need of this house is met. Fathers, we sow our offerings today. Bring them before the Lord. You tell us that you'll rebuke the devourer for our sake. If the enemy gets you shouted out when we bring our tithe before the Lord. Father, we thank you that this house is blessed. This house is blessed because every family, every church member is blessed. So, Lord, today we thank you that we can bring our tithe to you. It belongs to you already. We're just obeying your command. Lord, because we bless you with a tenth, the other 90% is blessed. And so, Father, we honor you today. We give you praise in Jesus' name. And all God's people say, amen. So as the ushers wait upon you, I'm just going to sing over you. Can I do that? Great is thy faithfulness. Oh, God, my Father, there is no Great. 
thank you. You may be seated just for a moment. If you'll give me just a couple of minutes of your time. The hallmark of who we are is worship. Worship is not just what I do. It's who I am. It's the fabric of everything uh, that we do. And uh, so when we come to a church, we, we try to emulate that heart of worship, demonstrate that to everyone and, and encourage people to be a part of that worship experience, to be drawn in. And one, one of the things that I was graced with was a big voice. And uh, when we started the work there with Pastor Rodney at the river at the Sun Dome, I would have just random people, and th these are grown men that normally don't sing, that they'd rather have their face painted, you know, their favorite football team's color, and they're very macho and all that, but they'd walk up and go, just something about Pastor Joe, whenever you start singing, I got to sing. I said, great. I've done my job. Because praise has a voice. I'm not going to minister on that this morning, but praise has a voice. One of the things that COVID tried to do was stop the voice right. and the sound right. of heaven on the earth. Right. Many churches are not even open today because they lost their voice. Right. And the enemy silenced their voice. And so for each one of us, our praise and our worship begins in our home, just you by yourself. You need to be a worshiper at the house by yourself. If you're, if you're the husband or whatever, lead that in your house. Be the one to step out and see, let your children see you worshiping the Lord and having a heart after God. Amen. And so there's a passage of Scripture that is one of my favorites. Can't say it is the favorite, but it's one of my favorites. So if you have your Bible, look at Psalm 27. I'm just going to drop a couple of things in your spirit, and we'll come back tonight. But there, if there was one thing that I could leave with you, just one thing, it would be to be a carrier of the sound of heaven in your life. Don't be afraid to let people hear you declare the goodness of God. Well, people know that I'm a Christian by my love. and by God. No, no, they need to hear you say, I love Jesus with all my heart. He's the passion of my life. And I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not ashamed of the Holy Spirit Amen. in my life. I'm not ashamed. Amen. And because of that, God is, has allowed us, and, and tonight maybe I'll share a little bit about that, some of the testimonies of, and my, my, my wife may come back tonight, and she's really a great, better preacher than I am. That's why, you know, what she did this morning. And uh, I'm kidding, but she really is really good. And... Uh, but tonight she may minister uh, on making room for the presence of the Lord. We may do that together. We minister a lot together, as you can tell. We, we tag team one another. But let's just read this passage real quick, and then I'm going to just say a couple of things. The Bible says here in Psalm 27, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear or dread? The Lord is the refuge and stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat my flesh, they stumbled and they fell. Though a host encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war rise against me, even then in this will I be confident. Verse 4. One thing, turn to your neighbor and say one thing. One. Have I desired or ask of the Lord, and that will I seek. To inquire for and insistently require that I may dwell in the house of the Lord and in his presence all the days of my life. To behold and gaze upon the beauty and the sweet attractiveness and the lovely delightfulness of the Lord. And to meditate, consider, and inquire in his temple. For in the day of trouble he will hide me in his shelter. In the secret place of his tent will he hide me. He will set me high upon a rock. And now shall my head be lifted above all my enemies round about. In his tent I will offer sacrifices and shouts of joy. I will sing, yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud. Not when I sit and meditate 
with my legs crossed and no. But when I shout aloud, Lord, you hear my voice. And look at this. And you have mercy and you're gracious to me and you answer me. You have said, seek my face, inquire for and require my presence. Look at this. As your vital need, not as one of your options, but as your vital need. My heart says to you, your face, your presence, Lord, I will seek, inquire for, and require of necessity, and on the authority of your word, I do these things. Hide not your face from me. Turn not your servant away in anger. You who have been my help, cast me not away. Neither forsake me, O God, of my salvation. Although my father and my mother have, for, have forsaken me, Yet the Lord will take me up, adopt me as his child. Teach me your ways, O Lord, and lead me in the plain and even path because of my enemies, those who lie in wait. And give me not up to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen up against me. They breathe out cruel and, and violent threatenings, he says. What? This is that famous verse that many people quote there in Psalm 27. In verse 13, what, in the Amplified, what would have become of me had I not believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living? Most people want to wait until the sweet by and by. But the Lord wants to bless you in the nasty now and now. Wait and hope for and expect the Lord. Be brave and of good courage and let your heart be stout and enduring. Yes, wait for and hope for and expect the Lord. I love this passage of Scripture. And there are a few things that I can drop in your spirit. Let me ask you a question. How many of you have ever been actually to the Holy Land and you've been there and seen the city of David that they're excavating even today? Anybody in the room ever been there? Okay, and I've stood there on that place. And whenever I stood there at the, at the excavating of, of, of the city of David and you look back to your left and there's the, the uh, uh, old Jerusalem and, and the, the mount and all that good stuff. When I stood there, the first thing that came to my mind was Psalm 27. And I could just see King David looking over that valley. And I could just see him standing there as king. And I could hear him coming from his heart after God. And, and the Lord prompted this to me because of what you shared last night about his heart that got God's attention. And I could just see him standing there, and he said, One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beautiness of the Lord and inquire in his temple. You have to understand, David was from the house of Judah. The temple was cared for by the Levites. So by nature, he had no right to go into that temple. But as king... If he wanted another set of, of white chargers purchased and another chariot overlaid with gold, all he had to do was speak the word and it was done. But he had one desire, and that was to take his king-sized bed and put it in that house. He said, if I could have one thing, I have everything. If he wanted another wife, he could have that, and we know what that cost him. But he said, if I could have one thing, if I could take my bed and put it in that house where the presence of Almighty God dwells, where the fire and the cloud abide, that would be where I live. You see, that's got to be our heart's cry. One thing. I don't need another dollar. I don't need another fine car. I've got a fine home. I've got a beautiful trophy wife. My only wife. The wife of my youth. I've got three beautiful children. Ten great grandchildren that all love Jesus. I don't have any earthly needs. But one thing I need is to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To behold his beauty and inquire in his temple. Take your hand and put it back on your chest one more time. I do this a lot because I want you to understand. This is the house where the Lord abides. You are the temple of the Holy come on, Spirit. Come on, come on. 
You're the carrier of the glory of God. You see, we enjoy what David longed for. What he wanted. He had to go to the temple to worship. We are the temple. We are the dwelling place of the Most High God. You don't have to go anywhere. All you have to do is, is right where you stand. Go, Ramosa, Lemise, Coranda, Beleistica. Lord, I acknowledge you are here. You're on the inside of me. I yield to your presence, and instantly the whole atmosphere of your life changes. David longed for Pentecost. When the presence of the Lord would be released from that house and would enter every believer. That's what he longed for. In this passage of Scripture, we see some things. To dwell in God's house. This is a beautiful place. Wonderful place to come and worship. But what makes this a place of worship is you. Without you, it's just another building of brick and mortar. Has no authority at all without you here. Because you are here, God is here. I'll never forget when Pastor Rodney and I, we all went to Washington, D.C. and ministered in an Ethiopian church up there. And they took us down this row of nothing but old cathedrals, one after the other, after the other, after the other. And the guy who was driving us, he said, that one is empty. That one is empty. There's three people meeting that one. There's three people meeting that one. That one is empty. They're just buildings. And they're void of the power of God because nobody is there. To dwell in the house of the Lord, it's a privilege and it's an honor. To acknowledge his presence and say, Lord, come, live big on the inside of me. To be hid in God's pavilion. Jesus, looking over the city of Jerusalem, he said, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. How oft I would have gathered you unto myself as a hen gathered her chicks, but you wouldn't let me. He wants to cover you. More than any 401K can cover you. A bank account, storage barns that are full. He wants to cover you. He wants to come and be your covering. To be hid in his pavilion. Psalm 91, the secret place of the Most High. You shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he's my refuge, my fortress, my God. In him will I trust. People don't realize the power of their praise. They don't realize the power of their offering. But to come and understand. Number three, to be lifted above your enemies. Just by speaking the name of Jesus, the enemy has to flee. The power of our praise. David said one thing, to be hid in his pavilion, in that place. To bring that sacrifice of joy. To sing praises to his name. Number five, to seek his face. One glorious thing about getting older is your grandchildren. I've got ten. And my grandbabies, I found out I I did a bad thing because whenever my grandbabies began to come, the first one came and said, Papi, I lost a tooth. I said, oh, because we don't believe in the tooth fairy. I said, here, let me bless you. And I gave him a $20 bill. Guess what? I've got 10 grandbabies. And they're, all, somebody's all they're building their college fund with my $20 bills. And now all of my brothers and my sisters and all their kids, all of their kids call me Uncle Puppy. And they will let me know when they lose a tooth. Uncle Puppy, I lost a tooth. Here, let me give you $20. When my grandbabies come to me, and I've got one, that little Zion, he would come and sit there. And then little Axel, he would come and he'd sit there. And, and if I'm talking to someone and I'm just having a conversation, and they'll say, Papi, I hear him. But I'm having a conversation with an adult. He's right. Papi, Papi, Papi. Hold on, son. I'll t- just one minute. Let me finish my conversation. Papi. And if I don't quit, he will grab my face. And he will turn my face. So I see his eyes and he'll go, Papi. Did you know our Heavenly Father's the same way? His hands are already outstretched. It's not what he can put in your hand from his hand. He wants you to know him. 
and know his face. Yeah. Amen. Amen. When I come into the presence of the Lord, I see his face. I told Pastor the yesterday in a meeting I was ministering there in Rockwall one Sunday morning, and as I was leading worship, I had a glimpse, and I saw Jesus turn to the Father and say, Hold on, Dad, I know that sound. He said, Hold on, just a minute. And I saw the Lord Jesus stand to receive my praise. And I shared that from the platform, what I saw, because it changed the way I worship. I told the team yesterday, I love you, you're beautiful, but you're really not my audience today. He's my audience. And when I worship, he's the one that I want to be blessed. I hope you enjoy it. I want you to go on the journey. But he's the one. He's the affection. He's the one that I come to adore. And I shared that. And a little lady met me after church and she said, how dare you? Who do you think you are that the son of God would stop what he's doing and stand to receive your praise? How arrogant can you be? And I went, uh-oh. Did I miss a detail? Lord, was I arrogant? Or did I really see that? And I went back home, and I was just worshiping the Lord, and the Lord said, remember. Remember when Stephen was being stoned? I said, yes, Lord. He said, I stood to receive Stephen. And he said, if I will stand to receive Stephen, I'll stand to receive your praise. And from that moment on, it changed the way I worship. When I come into this place, we may not have Sunday night service. Between now and Sunday, tonight, trumpet may sound. So this morning, I've given him my best offering. I didn't leave anything on the table. I'm happy. I get here tonight, we get another opportunity to do it again. I'm going to give him my best shot. I'm not going to leave anything on the table. To dwell in the house of the Lord, hid in his pavilion, lifted above our enemies, to bring that sacrifice of joy, to seek his face, and to be taught his ways. In that place of worship, one last testimony, and I'm going to bring it to a close. It was in the Philippines. We were ministering in Cebu one of the islands. There was a man in the service, about 55 years of age, and he was retiring as a ship captain. The government there in the Philippines had asked him to start raising up the next generation of ship captains. And on one of his journeys to, the, to Fiji, he met with some leaders down there, and they said, we need some help. We have all these mature koa trees in the Fijian islands and we need to harvest them because they will bring a lot of money for our, for our country and we want you to head that up he said now I'm retiring as a ship captain and he said I'm doing some other training but it, the reason he's telling me this is the fire God hit that place we laid hands on people and I said because God's given you a creative idea for a business and I said, tonight God's going to give you that plan. You've wondered how in the world to do it, but under the unction of the Holy Ghost, and under the power of the, of the Holy Ghost, God's going to give you the plan. I didn't know. I just spoke what I heard. Now he's in the back telling me this story. Now the Fijian government has come to me, and they want me to figure out a way to harvest all these koa trees. And he's weeping. And he's sitting in that office, the little green room back. He said, Pastor Joe, while I was on the floor, under the unction of the Holy Ghost, he said, God gave me the whole plan. I come back a year later. Now we're in the main church in Manila, 60,000. We're there in Manila. And as we're walking back to the pastor's green room, there sits Caesar in the back. And I walk by, I said, Caesar, how you doing? He said, Pastor Joe, I'm blessed beyond measure. He said, we're harvesting the trees. He said, it's more than I can ever even dream. He said, but that's not the end of it. He said, Pastor Joe, he said, our government came to me and he said, you know, here in Manila, they, they, they 
I don't know how they did it, but they began to bring dirt and sand in and they extended the shoreline of Manila after the Second World War. So most of all the tall buildings where the ocean used to be now is, is part of Manila. He said, they want to do the same thing in Cebu. And he said, because I have been so blessed with the koa tree situation. They came to me and said, he's also an engineer. He said, I want you now to oversee that project because we're going to reclaim land here in Cebu City. He said, Pastor Joe, he said, I, he said, the Lord has just taught me so many things. And he says, visions and dreams. He said, I just can't quit. And he said, as I share those dreams, they go, help us do that. David said one thing, if I desire of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold his beauty and inquire in his temple. Every need you have is found in his presence. For someone here today, you're just one praise away from your breakthrough. What? You've tried everything else? It's like our little friends here, you know, oh, under the unction, you're just like you don't know how to respond. Then the joy comes and the flow comes. That's the way it's going to be for your business, for your family. For those of you that are finishing high school, headed to college or whatever it is, your vocation. How many of you in this room today, God's given you a creative idea, but you've never stepped out? Huh? Look at the hands. Where do you think that dream came from? It didn't come from the devil. He's never had one creative thought in his entire life. It's creation. Still kill and destroy, that's all he knows. Came straight from heaven. But in the presence of the Lord, just worshiping, you watch the flow. For someone here today, God is going to teach you how to live in his presence. Because you're a carrier of that glory. It's here, right here. In this room, your presence can be found as the idols of our soul come crashing down hearts are opened by your holy wind as the praises of God's people ascend so we kneel in honor of you, Lord, as we see you high and lift up, as your train fills the temple and the cloud moves in, and the glory.
Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Rest. Wow. Jesus. <laughs> I'm like literally caught up in heaven. I don't know about you guys. Wow. Amazing. What an amazing gift to the body of Christ. I want to give the church an opportunity to sow into this anointing. How many of you guys have been blessed here today? Has it been awesome? What a powerful ministry. And with our seed, we can push them. Amen? Come on, somebody. To the next place, to the next place. It's just amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. So where's Yevon? Because I'm totally drunk out of my mind. Tell them how they can give. How many of you guys want to sow into this anointing? Amen. How many of you guys know that the body of Christ needs this? Amen. You know, everything that Joe and Becky have been sharing is literally what we've been crying out for. It's our heart. That sound of heaven. We want it in this place. And so we brought you in so we can keep it, amen? <laughs> I'm, I'm, take, I'm taking it, I'm taking it. It's going to stay. I'm begging Jesus. <laughs> amen. Amen. Hey, man, you know, when you recognize the anointing, you know, on, on, on somebody's life, you know, people don't. You know, I tell people, you know, you just got to stop being an idiot. You know, just recognize. And I'm telling you right now, for me, they're my favorite. They're the best. You know, I believe when we go home to worship Jesus, Joe's going to be leading. <laughs> I'm just telling you right now. I'm just telling you right now. <laughs> this is going to be the glorious Joe. It's going to be a whole other thing. <laughs> oh, man, it's awesome. It's awesome. So, ushers, go ahead and pass the offering envelopes. If you haven't, you can tell them how they can get Awesome. Um, we can put up our slide for our ways to give. Uh, obviously, we have Cash App, River Orlando Church. This offering, like Pastor said, will go to Pastor Joe and Becky. We have Tylee, uh, River Orlando Church. And then we also have our online giving at our website, riverlandochurch.com forward slash donate. And then uh, you can give a check, make your check out to River Orlando Church. Or you can give via credit card and the envelopes. Ask the Lord what he has you give. If you're married, get an agreement with your wife. If you're single, get an agreement with yourself. And uh, amazing soil to give into. If anyone needs an envelope, just raise your hand. been blessed today. You need to invite somebody tonight. Amen. Come on. Take advantage of, of this gift. 
Amen. This anointing. Amen. While it's in the house. How many of you guys will invite your friends and family? Amen. Close cousin. Amen. Uncle. Grandma. Great grandma. Amen. Get them here. Amen. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for this precious couple, Lord. Thank you, God, that we can even have the privilege to even sow in to this anointing, God. We just thank you for them. We bless them today. We honor you with our substance. In Jesus' name. And everybody said? Everybody said? Amen. Tonight at 7. Don't miss out. Amen. We love you.